how exactly i mean this was one of the points in which law differs for religious institutions land properties for the majority community and for other minority communities but what are the other points in which law treats both these properties very very differently say the religious property of or the majority community and the religious property of any other community any other minor, minority community so let me just put it that way uh the constitution is talking about the minority both linguistic and religious right which means the government gets to make laws protecting properties or endowments or anything as you know as far as they stay to the secular activities they get to do that as abhi ke liye to those are the judgments they say that the secular activities they can meddle with right it go with that so accordingly the government get to make these laws for a uh, better regulation in terms of the secular activities of these endowments and properties now coming back to the point that i made it depends on the intention of the legislature what would be the act for uh, community versus community let's not say versus community wise and what powers they would give what constitution of the body would be what recourse a man would have if it if the, I mean, the person is aggrieved by such body's decision all of this is actually uh, completely coming out as uh, i would say appeasement for one community and the other community is no to understand i would say things from the point of view that a central government be it any party actually for of passing an act central act to protect or let to promote property grabbing by one community whereas there is no central act for any other you know uh, for let's say any other minority for that matter apart from say there is no other minority community which are far less than this com- particular community they have no population to them they would hardly have any properties which would really need protection their religious endowments and properties would need protection and regulation basically so they are not being protected why is this just one particular community like uh, star of the eye why is it so and why is it that uh, the majority community is being let go by the central government you could say not have a central act i'm not saying give a central act even there is a different view on in the muslim community so i don't exactly know 2019 or around that time in uh, madras high court the madurai bench uh, was hearing a matter where muslim community a particular body from the muslim community had challenged the waqf saying why is the government meddling in our affairs we don't need a waqf so it's not as if they wanted uh, everybody in their side also wants it just like we say we don't want them meddling in our temple administration uh but it's not the legislator is not treating it every community and every minority at par this is not a particular example for you to see you can also look at other schemes other uh, educational uh, schemes and everything else that goes to a particular community and you know compare it with the other communities and get about the linguistic communities because they are not there in the picture so you are like looking at you know appeasement it's just clear appeasement there is nothing else there this act itself is the intent is appeasement and hence no other party or any other government for that matter would want to put it down or strike it out right but then we always have the courts we always have the supreme court 
you always have the same quote yes we believe this is no more religious anymore you know this is not a religious matter you're not being discriminated on religious ground by a body that is religious so uh, i mean what we have at hand is a situation where uh, we can simply uh, make the you know the best use of the tools that we have with us so what what i get is the solution is since there is no state act it's the central act which is being you know applied to state and as far as i know there are around five or six states that don't have work act you know applied to them uh one of them is arunachal pradesh i guess <laughs> i don't know about the population of that particular community there but uh, there are states who have not uh, you know notified the work act for their state the governments have not notified them for the state so let's look at the central act let's evaluate that uh, look at the unconstitutional uh, provision and if the intent is self is the constitution so we need to look at the proper provision and the proper challenge and not go in the net bit and try that everything be treated as class or comes under one umbrella i don't know how that will help putting everything into one umbrella and even religious endowments and everything there is that plea also where they want this one trust act which deals with everything so i don't know i have not examined that uh, you know suggestion but i would say at least for this particular act there are better uh, ways to analyze it and pinpoint the unconstitutional uh, parts in it so i'm thinking you know the best so far would be if you challenge the tribunal itself if you challenge the tribunal and the legislative you know power to make it since there was none if the tribunal goes out of picture you would at least be open to challenge board decision in the civil court let's say that would be a good start yeah absolutely absolutely shakti ji that uh, i mean it's very very important for a lay person to be able to challenge or to be able to ho- uh, be heard you know court which is neutral which is religiously neutral which is uh, not just neutral but decide matter for it you know, it it has to be uh, available as in a civil court is something a common man can approve if you expect him to go directly to the supreme court after the tribunal i doubt everybody would be able to do that please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel for our other social media links more content and to support our work please visit citti.net dhanyawad namaskar